Hello, dears, and welcome to Al-Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you a very interesting and a rare occurrence of a myeloid sarcoma arising as a paraspinal mass. So this is a five-year-old male child who presented with back pain and was found to have a paraspinal mass. And as you can see from the low power magnification, what really attracts the attention is the pink color of the a slide. There isn't lots of glue. And this is actually important as a small tip or a clue to th let you think of the diagnosis. So on high power magnification, you can see that the proliferation is composed of what appears to be individual cells. So these are not cohesive cells. These are individual cells with abundant acidophilic cytoplasm, eccentric nucleus, vesicular, that with the vesicular chromatin and the prominent nucleolus. Now, this is actually on oil immersion, just to let you see the very important tip that led to the diagnosis, which is the granularity of the cytoplasm. So this is actually a typical promyelocyte, where we have a large cell with eccentrically placed the nucleus, vesicular chromatin, prominent uh, nucleolus, and the granular, abundant granular acidophilic cytoplasm. And once you see the cell, you start to look around, and more or less many of those cells, for example, here, are just replica of the main cell. And this one, for example, in its way to become a metamyelocyte and then band cells and so on and so forth. And this is also another uh, high power magnification on oil immersion lens, showing again the same, the large cells, the secular nucleus, prominent nucleolus that is eccentrically placed and abundant granular cytoplasm. Now, if you look in the background, you start to see some segmenters, for example, in neutrophil and perhaps some scattered eosinophils as well. These are extremely important to render the diagnosis. Now, the first stain, actually this was the last stain that I did because of the initial diagnosis that the case came uh, um, uh, or arrived to the KHCC to our center with. So CD99 was positive in the membranes of the tumor cells. You have to remember that CD99 is not specific. CD99 alone does not really support the diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma. It has to be used in panel because it can be positive in so many tumors, including, for example, as in this case, myeloid sarcoma. So there is positivity for CD99, does not mean anything alone. The more specific marker, the NKX 2.2, is actually the one that we currently use to support the diagnosis of human sarcoma, and this was completely negative. The other differential diagnosis that was raised up because of the location and the age of the patient was rhabdoid tumor or rhabdoid meningioma. And INI BAF47 shows retained nuclear stain. So this tends to exclude the diagnosis. CD43, extremely important to use in this context. And as you can see, the tumor cells, and this is on high power magnification, the tumor cells uh, are positive. And remember, sometimes CD43 can be more helpful than CD45 because sometimes it tends to be negative in a group of hematopoietic, uh, hematolymphoid tumors. So always, if uh, uh, you can afford it, you can use CD45 and CD43. If not, I really like always to use 43 because the coverage is actually a more broad spectrum. And then the beautiful MPO showing this intense positivity of the tumor cells because of the granularity of the cytoplasm, uh, because of the myeloperoxidase content, it's strongly diffused, the positive look at this cell here and here. And to ensure that there is no overstaining, we have to make sure that our internal negative controls, like the vessels and the endothelium, are negative. So this is really a beautiful, this is high power magnification, a beautiful stain where we have diffuse positivity of the malignant cells in the presence of an internal negative control. Now, CD163 uh, was ordered in order to look for 
the content of macrophages uh, um, uh, or monocytes, which are seen in a subset of uh, AMLs or myeloid sarcomas, especially the ones that tend to form the uh, soft tissue masses. So the final diagnosis of this case is myeloid sarcoma. Of course, the patient had to undergo blood film examination as well as bone marrow examination to prove or disprove the presence of um, a leukemia component to the myeloid sarcoma. So please remember that CD99 alone cannot really support a diagnosis essentially of any entity. It has to be read in the context of other immunohistochemical markers. And that a, a very good clue to myeloid sarcoma, regardless of the location in the skin, in the GI, in the brain is the granularity to the cytoplasm. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.